guide for practicing trauma-informed care for patients with chronic pelvic pain. The authors have no financial disclosures. The objectives of this video are to describe the relationship between chronic pelvic pain and trauma, to review principles of trauma-informed care, and to provide concrete examples of how to incorporate trauma-informed care standardly into the office setting. Trauma results from an event or series of events that is experienced by an individual as either harmful or life-threatening and has long-lasting effects on the individual's functioning and well-being. The first R of trauma-informed care is realizing the widespread effect of trauma. The majority of adults have experienced a traumatic event and one in three women have experienced sexual violence. This is especially important as a gynecologist to understand how your patient's trauma may impact their gynecologic care. Chronic pelvic pain is more common in patients with a history of trauma. In one study, nearly 50% of patients at a pelvic pain clinic reported a history of abuse. And patients with chronic pain are more likely to experience childhood physical, sexual, and verbal and emotional abuse. Trauma history is associated with lower functioning, higher number of surgeries, and worse patient symptoms. Gynecology visits can be re-traumatizing, both for victims of sexual trauma and for patients experiencing chronic pain. For this reason, ACOG recommends a universal trauma-informed care model. However, a recent survey showed that only 27% of providers are doing this. Trauma-informed care seeks to create physical and emotional safety for survivors and rebuild their sense of control and empowerment. This begins with the history. Conducting conversations in private with the patient clothed and sitting at eye level are strategies to gain trust through communication. Universal screening is recommended and is especially important in patients presenting with chronic pain. Screening starts with framing, which normalizes the questions. This is demonstrated in the next video. Chronic events are very common and can have direct impact on your physical and mental health. For these reasons, I ask all of my patients about any prior difficult experience that may impact your care today or are impact your care moving forward. Do you feel as though certain events in your life have impacted your health? And what would you want me to know about that? Another way to screen for general trauma is shown next. Have you ever experienced an unusual or especially frightening event? It is important to screen specifically for sexual trauma in addition to general trauma. Have you ever been forced or pressured to engage in sexual activity that made you feel uncomfortable in any way? When I was in college, I had a traumatic sexual experience. Do you feel comfortable telling me more about that? I don't really want to talk about it today. After screening, the next pillar of trauma-informed care is the response. Providers should focus on validation, acknowledging the difficulty of sharing, expressing sympathy, and offering resources. You didn't deserve that. I'm really sorry to hear that that happened to you. Thank you for sharing with me. And I'll be mindful of that moving forward. Would you like some resources that have been helpful for others that have experienced events like this? And how comfortable are you with me documenting this in your medical records? Any aspect of the physical exam can re-traumatize a patient. It is important for the provider to empower the patient and emphasize that they are in control and safe. Providers should use clear transitions, ask the patient for permission with each step, and encourage an open dialogue. Now we're going to move on to the physical exam portion. Throughout the exam, I want to emphasize that you were in complete control. First, we're going to examine your back. And then we're going to move on to your abdomen, examine your hip. When introducing the pelvic exam, it is important to ask whether the patient has had a pelvic exam before. Have you ever had a pelvic exam? Yes, I've had them. Whether they consent to a pelvic exam. Are you comfortable moving forward with a pelvic exam today? Mm -hmm. And if they would like to know any additional information. And are you familiar with the components of a pelvic exam, what we're looking for and why? I think so. Would you like me to explain it to you a little bit further before we start? Yeah, I think that makes me feel better. Models are a useful tool when explaining the different parts of the pelvic exam. Clarifying the difference between stop and out empowers the patient and gives them control. If at any point it becomes too painful, please let me know to stop. And if you want me to stop altogether, you can say out and I'll remove my hand. Language is a very important part of trauma-informed care and easily changeable in your practice. Avoiding the words listed here, specifically the words relax, touch, and spread, can help prevent re-traumatization. We recommend clear transitions between each step, having the patient assist with draping, starting away from the pain, and to engage the patient so they can be active participants in their own care. These strategies are demonstrated by the provider in this clip. First, we're going to start by examining your back. I'm going to have you lift up the back of the shirt, your shirt for me, if you don't mind. And since you've said the pain is worse on your left, I'm going to start by looking at your right. Okay. okay. And we're going to feel the spine and then the muscles surrounding the spine. Okay. Any pain here? A little bit. Now, is that similar to the pain that you were describing earlier? Yeah. These same strategies help prevent re-traumatization during the abdominal exam. Ask the patient to lift up their own gown. Start away from the pain. Now, since you said most of your pain is on your left, we're going to start by feeling the right side. Explain the anatomy you're feeling. Feeling up by your stomach. And engaging the patients as part of the exam. Show me where it hurts the most, generally. Right here. Right there. 
Stirrups should be referred to as footrests. Next, I'm going to have you put your feet in the footrests. In this clip, the provider gets permission before starting the hip exam. Do you mind if I touch your leg and move your legs? No. Nope. And let me know if it triggers any pain sensations or any discomfort at any point. The hip exam can also be performed while the patient is clothed. General exams can trigger flashbacks and anxiety in up to 50% of people who have experienced sexual assault. In chronic pain patients, the exam can be both traumatizing and painful. Appropriate language during positioning helps set the patient at ease. I ask you to um, move your knees towards my hands so they meet my hands. Even more if you can. All right. So I'm going to move my hands and try to leave your knees in place. Another way of saying this is let your knees fall out to the side. We suggest avoid using the term relax at all costs. Assessing the pelvic floor is an important step in the workup of chronic pelvic pain. This exam is not familiar to most patients, and explaining each step and what you're feeling and why can help inform the patient and empower them. And since you said most of your pain is on the left, we're going to start by feeling the right pelvic floor. So first, just feeling superficially all of the muscles. And now I'm going to circle back and press a little harder to try to feel certain muscle groups. Does this trigger any uncomfortable sensations? A speculum exam, if needed at all, can be done last to not sensitize the pelvic floor. Use lubricant with the smallest possible speculum, offer to show the patient speculum, and consider self-insertion. Lastly, we recommend the patient redresses before moving Why on to the next you... steps get changed, and then we can make a plan together. In conclusion, trauma is very common in patients with chronic pelvic pain. Trauma-informed care seeks to empower, to create physical and emotional safety for patients, to foster resilience, and avoid re-traumatization. Gynecologists should universally implement a trauma-informed care model. However, this is especially important in patients who present with pain.